it definitely could have been more dominant, but you know, we did exactly what we said. We're just playing like we do on any other Tuesday, just like a script. Oh, well, I hope the win streak continues, and let's see if EGP closes out in the second match. On a Sunday, that's right. <laughs> I, I always love to hear from the coaches there. And yeah, it was a very strong start for EG. Some concern there for a moment there, Kukuka, right? For yes. EG, but uh, I definitely think that it's it's very clear. Demon One being here has just contributed a lot to this team. You just want to talk about Demon One. Is okay, that is that is fan. that right? No, but especially what a dominant second half. The fact that they didn't even let one round split. I love that Potter was saying, you know, it could have been more dominant. She wasn't happy with a 13-5, apparently. Yeah, but still. It was a dominant game out of them. And I think a big part of that was the pistol rounds. Both of these halves, they mm -hmm. started so incredibly strong on the side of EG, going up 3-0 and after winning their pistol and then converting that into a bonus round win. And that's something that EG has been focusing a lot on, even back in Americas, where they're putting a lot of emphasis on having specific plans for those early rounds. In MR13, it's so important. And EG, yeah. that's one of the reasons it was so dominant. And, it, and it's not only that. It goes both ways. Of course, you get the, the extra credits but the other team, you're kind of forcing them of being in that constant situation of having to go on an eco round after round. But since you've secured that bonus round and probably the fourth one as well, breaking your economy is going to take them at least four rounds. So, of course, it builds up a lot to the rest of the half. It really does. And for EG, beyond just miss rounds, I think what impressed me the most in their defensive side was the way that they were playing the blood replays with this double duelist composition. I think they have a really good idea of what space they're giving and how to storm back in. Because they respect foot sight executes. Like you were talking about in the pre-show, they're so incredibly strong and they have good ideas of how to set that up. But EG is good at giving that space and quickly flooding back in with this yes. double duelist, with a nade, with a flash. And it's really well coordinated. It, it, to me, it was a lot of about recovery because even in those rounds where they didn't have the first kill, the way that they had map control during the attack, that they were going for those late plans, the way that they wanted to work around the map, we saw a lot on the on the defense as well, the, the, the moment to save the utility, when to use it, and how to recover the space, as you were saying, that you have given up has been flawless from EG. And, and that's really something that we've just seen EG just continue to develop week after week in the Americas region. They've really improved, but also the individuals have found those successful moments as well. One person in particular who's just in his redemption arc is obviously calm because he has been playing the best Valorant that we have seen from this young man in quite some time and honestly could be the blue hair. It could be, but honestly, he was this good even before. First few weeks of Americas, everyone was criticizing this guy for how poorly he was playing when the team was struggling. But in those last few weeks of Americas, into playoffs, he stepped up in such a big way, not just in his individual performance, but in adding a voice to the team, helping Busio contribute ideas, and here now, at this big global land that they've gotten the opportunity to come to, he's just continued that trajectory. Jesus, the KDA versus Foot is a three. That's, uh, that's insane to see. Yeah. I think that also something that we need to talk about that I think Potter was very smart doing and something that we talked about a lot also in, in EMEA is the fact that when you uh, win that coin toss or when you have that preference to choose to be the team A. We're talking about the first map that you're going to play here. You want it to be your pick. It's not only about, uh, you know, getting the first ban. I think it's it, it doesn't have that much uh, weight, but also thinking about that third map yeah. and ha getting to choose the side. It's so important to go out here and have the performance that they just had. And that's always a strength for EG. It should be no surprise that they had great prep against Foot and win dominantly on Split. Because in America's like they did the same thing versus Loud. They're really good at reading into these vetoes and having preset ideas of where they're going to go and being able to counter strat their opponents, which is going to be difficult for Foot into yeah. the rest of this pool. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're certainly going to need to have to pick up the pieces here, but that, of course, takes us over uh, before we get into our next map there for a little aim lab shoot around. This time we're going to be following Mr. Fallen. Uh, and, you know, to just continue to uh, talk more about what Foot can do moving forward here, Kukuka. I mean, obviously your experience with this team uh, is unmatched. So <laughs> what are you really looking for here? What, what what pivots are you hoping that they make? Because we saw the signs of brilliance in that yes. split game. Yeah, yeah, totally. But I don't think Split is a map where they have ever been comfortable. Lotus for is sure. complete opposite. We were talking during the pre-show about the, the set plays, how deep they can go into uh, some of the rounds. And I think the perfect example was the last time that they played. They had been using the same pistol round on attack for four matches and they mimic the same thing that they did on every single one of them to make Liquid think that it was going to be the same just to play tricks into their minds. We are like, nope, now is when we change it up. 
Yeah, this team is really good at, in these later stages of tournaments, adding new things to compositions that they already play. And the composition unit itself that they tend to run on Lotus is really interesting. More and more teams have started to pick up this Neon for what it gives you in the fast rotations in the mid round, but they don't play it combined with the Sky. Instead, they play it with just KO as that initiator. So it really requires a lot of pressure on those Neon and KO players to be constantly rotating on their defense, constantly finding new pieces of information, but they're so good at it. Yeah, and now we're going to be moving forward here to Lotus as EG picks up a massive win on split, 13 to 5. And you got to be left wondering, like, yes, EG had to have been prepared for this Lotus pick here. Totally. Which, you know, and if we know anything about EG is that they do like to play against their opponents. They do like to counter strat from time to time. They do, but what I'm really hoping to see from them isn't necessarily some crazy counter strat. It's instead changing their composition. They've been playing solo Omen kind of as their only controller. No, I'm fine with the jet. I do prefer the Neon, but my main issue is that they don't have a Viper. So on their attacking side, they only have two smokes to work with, and on a three-site map, it means your rotations can be quite telegraphed. It makes it harder to re-clear a lobby, or re-clear C mound in the late round, which are some of the most important pieces of space to allow yourself to pivot. Yeah, I think that it's a, oh, another conversation that we had me and EA a lot because you you kind of want the, the the killjoy, the breach, and the viper, but you know you you cannot have everything uh, if you want to rely you know not only on the utility but also on the effect that you want to have on the map. You need to be versatile for both of the halves. So I, I think that especially for for foot, it will be too easy if they were to encounter a team that does not run the viper. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you there. I think if there is an agent to give up, I'm fine with letting go of the breach on this one. I think. Scott with a Neon is the best for having rotations and, and re-clear on the mid round on this one, but you really can make that work with the Jet as well. I think a lot of what Breach does is that line control, which is really valuable, particularly on your defense, but on a map that can lean pretty attack heavy, I think having that Viper is invaluable. Yeah, and also too, I mean, Viper has just, uh, you know, at least in the Americas, right, we've been having ha Harbor Viper like so much, but Viper in particular has just been seeing so much play. It's like, it's just great vision blocking, just great opportunities for you to be able to slice up the map effectively. And we'll see what we end up getting here, oh, but no, we're actually surprises. going to be sticking with the breach. Mimi, do you think that this is a mistake on EG's part? I think it could be, but it also comes down to how much practice they have. Obviously, they didn't know if Demon 1 was even going to make it until just a few days ago. And sometimes, even if it's not the perfect comp, playing something that you're comfortable with, that you know very well, can be good. I think that maybe that's uh, the reason they decided to start here on that defense. We were talking about the attack and how everything is prepared, how we see a lot of 3-2 uh, being done by uh, foot. I think that mostly they are, if we're talking about preparation it has to show here and if they want to do it in the composition they feel comfortable doing so but when we're looking at this you have to focus on foot success in the past this is their most played maps nine times in the emea league 55 percent win rate on that one the only teams that have taken them down Fnatic and Liquid, the two finalists of VMEA, and Na'Vi, another respectable squad here at Masters Tokyo. This is by far their best map, but they have been counter stratable in the past, and we know that's what EG's good at. And I think that's the part that I'm a little concerned about, because we were even seeing that a bit during Split. You were saying it when we're off camera, it's like, man, a lot of, they're, they're just being a little too predictable here, a little too predictable. Foot's going to need to clean that up. Oh, yeah, exactly. And not only that, they need to rese reset their, their mental completely. The last time when they played against Liquid, the, Liquid performed a comeback after a two, uh, sorry, a two ten half. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see how this plays out. Lotus is the battleground. Everything's set to go. Let's send it over to Doug and Paula. Thank you so much, Golden Boy Ball. We've got to talk sorry. about compositions, yep. especially because you would think that uh, Foot were leaning into this map, kind of putting the onus on EG. Yeah, hundred percent. Are you going to change it? Are you going to yeah. play something that's a lot of other teams are going to start to play, right? Are you going to run the Viper? Are you going to run the Viper Omen that everybody is running? Especially in EU, I think, really, they set the tone on this yeah. map back at Lock-In, basically going undefeated there, right? So the America's team struggled to catch up. But I think in America's, we saw EG is the ones who are getting left in the dust yeah. in this composition. So I think the point that Mimi brought up on the desk about time being a factor, not knowing who's playing, not knowing how much time you have to get reformed or Demon 1 up to date on whatever changes you might have made, it's very important, so I love that foot bring us here. And now we get to see whether we have a revitalized Lotus from EG, even with the same comp. Because otherwise, you, you might see us going straight towards pro. You might see that same situation. It's actually a reverse. While we see this technical pause come up, 
it's a reverse of what we saw in Split, right? We saw Foot running that kind of off meta, the Cypher, no Viper type sure. of situation. Yeah. Now here, EG is the ones who are in that situation. Yeah, where they're not running something that's necessarily meta or just trying to pave yeah. their own path. Right, but to go back to the point you were making earlier, as we figure out what's going on with this tech pause, once we get info, we'll get you all in um, informed as to what's going on and hopefully get back into the action as soon as possible. But to go back to what you were saying earlier, it's not like EG play this map very often. It was interesting to see the stats of, of rounds played yeah. for a foot versus EG. I mean, it was night and day. We're talking about near 100 rounds for foot. Yeah. Meanwhile, for EG, it was maybe 10. 15, something along those lines. I am being told very quickly that the tech pause issue is due to a mouse, but it's over. So we should be getting back into the action as soon as possible. I love this crowd, by the way, man. <laughs> this crowd is incredible. They've been so good already. It's just day one. They're wrong on the answer there, though, Vandal, for sure. Yeah, sure. Right? <laughs> back in the game, though, and immediately you see Foot Style coming into the forefront. Instantly going to try to get this plant down on this B site with the wall. Actually, just controlling Mound instead. The wall's not even available for Kiwi. Yeah, and I think it's been fun to watch Foot play because at least at home, regionally, they like to test water everywhere around the map. They'll threaten some B. They'll get some info. They'll invest some utility yeah, shirt. I like that they're playing with the idea of pivoting into Mound there. Already showing up some of the variabilities that you have with this comp. And they're committing to this. Kiwi's already taken a decent amount of damage. Nobody's Flashed out up. With him, though. The dog took a bite out of him. He's done. Demon one with the opener, and look at how weak they are, but they are going to pivot, and they're going to pivot right into Bustio. Here's Molly's on the site. Two of them. He had to pop the first in the face of the knife, so that's all he got off. And they do break the second one, so they will be able to potentially get on the site, but Bustio's oh. challenging. Alarm bot's still there, and there it is. You hear it go off. Mr. Fallen committing to the plant, though, in the face of the spam. Oh, that's a ghost spamming through that ledge. That's a second kill going over for EG as well. Is this a third pistol in oh. favor of EG? Yes, it is. Are you serious? Three pistols for EG, but that shot from Chocobo, he's jumping! Yeah, that was filthy. That is nasty. And again, Kiwi out by himself. I didn't quite see what remaining. split up that hit. Must have been a stun from the breach. Because you saw the follow-up flash, you saw the follow-up paranoia as well. And EG again, three for three on the pistols. Causing so much trouble for Foot. I think to go back to a conversation we were having earlier, I, I think it applies here as well, in that Breach is not something that you commonly see yeah. on Lotus. So expecting the timings on the fault line, that, things like that, like can make a drastic difference. That's the importance, right, of yeah. playing these off-meta comps and switching up compositions as well, right? You, you break up the prep and you put yourself in positions where the other team is not ready. They haven't played, they haven't practiced, they haven't gotten the reps of, you know, breaking a camera or in this case. Right. Dealing with the stuns, like you mentioned. Stuns a lot easier to deal with Breach, though, I have to say, other than like a short, compared to like a Sova or a Cypher. Yeah, I would agree completely. Your muscle memory is much more trained to turn a flash than anything else. See the alarm bot just on the other side of the smoke, but the knife once again catches him. Busio has to give the space up, and Com fills it. Very well done. Very well done. A flawless round for EG. Again, what's that, the third yeah. that we've seen? Fourth, maybe? There's definitely some clean rounds coming out there. I love how Com's able to tuck back and take the space as well, because in that conversation about like what you're used to playing with, you're not really used to playing against a KO. So Busio has been tagged twice by this knife. Yep. And he has to fall off. Com fills that space to actually recover. <laughs> it's a Potter's feeling it when she's, <laughs> when she's saying things like that two rounds in. Yeah. Just too easy. For, for Potter, that's harsh. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Easy now. <laughs> Third round of the half, another opportunity for a bonus. Remember, EG have excelled in situations such as these. Can they convert again in the face of foot style of poking and prodding and finding info and utility everywhere around the map before deciding where they want to commit? It'd be difficult to do that here without EG or playing this defensively. Look at how far up Demon 1 is already. Off of the Trailblazer, he's filled the space. Foot are committing to see here. He's getting the mollies off this time, though, both of them. The alarm bot, too. Mr. Fallen had to jump out. And won both the bonuses so far, EG. They give up the site, though. This is a full retake on the bonus this time. Ethan still with one flash, and there it is. Busio on the swing off of that. Cracks trying to hold them back, only able to get one. And the stun's so good from Calm. And Maj and Fallen find themselves in a 2v4 outnumbered yet again. There's a flank coming. Demon 1, Pacey dashing his way forward, dashing his way into his death. As Foot have held the line. Can Calm do it by himself? Mosh, 16 HP. 
HP's called out. You see him jumping with the classic. Time ticking. There's no abundance of it here. Oh. Is he going to do the thing where he taps and then falls off? No, he stays. Now he falls off and time is short, but so is health. Kam has to go fast to try to get the kill, and I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Too many things to deal with. Maj gets the kill. Footer on the board. Huge heroics from Maj. That retake was coming very fast from EG, and it was successful. But dealing with the flank, flicking back, dealing with the player, pushing him from sight. This is what I'm talking about right here. So well done for Maj. And you can tell it looked like Kalm was trying to start the defuse and then fall off the ledge. Saw that on TikTok. <laughs> he, he was looking for the defuse where yeah. the player's not watching the angle. Try to get maybe to half while he's speaking the other side. Mm -hmm. That plant is definitely much harder than the more open plant way further in the site, yeah. which you see other teams use. Deep orb off of the nano. A little combo of utility there, dealing some damage. Despite, keep it back. despite that, Dark almost threw it. Yeah. He was so fast ahead of it. And it's not he TP'd past it or anything like that. He threw out the one way and just got he in just front. Ran. Yep. And the thing is, yeah, sure, the orb does break Bustio's line of sight, but now it's not up. Can he fight with it? At least spray for Dargamo to get some value. Bustio finds two big ones. <laughs> he sprays for himself to get value. Yep. That's through the Viper orb. I'm not. Look at Demon One again. And the Trailblazer mid. Should confirm a lot here. Busio with the third on the round. Demon One with a bit of a sidestep procking the dash. Mr. Fallen's getting out. Does he re-peak? He does, just for a moment. Gives up that he TP'd across, so Demon One has full range to actually go forward now. And he continued to apply this pressure. Remember, we saw it in the previous round, and yes, he was decapitated for it, but he applied pressure. He bought time. It's a very similar situation here. It's not the 2v4 that we saw previously. Number's a little bit more in favor of foot but perhaps a bit of deja vu. Scary moment there, but they do have waterfall control and it's smoked down. They're looking for a kill anywhere they can get it. It's gonna be through spawn. Oh, they're playing so far back. This fault line, it's gonna be so good. One of the two flashes that he has, but now they're both gone. Ethan feeling the pressure, dropping the flash to stay alive while Demon 1 is repositioned. Again? And I don't think that they know. Oh, they did, they did. Kiwi read that beautifully. Demon One started running at the tail end of that, trying to regroup and make sure that he uses the space that they gave while they're pushing into spawn. I thought Calm was for sure going to stun that line. Instead, he goes for a flash, which almost just as good. Either way, Foot really, really playing well in two situations that. That was a 2v4, two, two I think, in this yeah, situation. Yeah, it was a 2v4 in the previous round, a 2v3 this time. I mean, they've been able to handle numbers down situations so masterfully. Wasn't the same on Split. So you can tell already, much, much more comfortable on this map. And that's certainly continuing to show. You see Ethan up aggressive there, getting an early peek to try to deal some damage with the Sheriff that he had. The lighter weaponry brought into this one. And finding no success. And those are the two <laughs> players that you wouldn't expect to go really aggro really fast, but foot constantly. Go for plays like that with Cracks and Mr. Fallen, looking for picks instantly, especially with that Viper wall, and especially with the fact that it's an eco comp, probably isn't gonna go for the stun to take aim, aim control. And even when they do do that, there's plenty to pivot off of for each, or for foot. There. The panel's still up behind them, but off of the tap of the door, Jogamo invests smokes towards A. And there it is, now it goes. Now overdrive use, dashing his way forward. In the face of the paranoia, swinging around the turret was not enough to dissuade. And now Jogamo with, again, just the Sheriff. Trying to play spoiler, but he's getting flanked and he has no idea. Maj is behind him. Yes, Jogamo gets one. I thought he was going to get the second. Demon 1 left alone. Demon 1 cleaned up and another round for foot. And the first lead in the series for them. Instantly taking advantage of some of these ideas. And the differences in the composition, too. Instantly pushing out a main there. Not worried about that pressure that could come through it as well. Popping the overdrive on the anti-eco. It's a very formidable weapon in that case. Flags flying high. That looks like they're having fun, too, man. That's a rowdy bunch. I love the foot watch parties. We saw so much of this. <laughs> Do you now? 
That <laughs> spam coming through. Speaking of the spam coming through, it's an Odin in the hands of Jogamo. The overlaid. Jogamo trying to get through that wall as well with the Odin. It's not something that actually many of the teams are picking up, despite the fact that very, very, very solid tool on this map. Especially in this position right here. Yeah, paper walls. Off of the orb tap, off of any presence towards panel. You can spam right there. And that's what it seems like. That's where they're headed. Busio keeping him back for now. Jogmo trying to swing out as well. You can see it. But Busio might hold the line by himself. There's the spam that we were just referring to. In the face of the lockdown, Busio swings out and gets four. Majin, an impossible situation, and the very first ace in Japan goes to Busio. <laughs> Go on, son, stand up, pop off. <laughs> Huge round. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was a Kiwi cosplay from last round, the overdrive. <laughs> but Busio just shuts it down. Down and again, you're talking about that Odin spam. Look how much difficulty they're having approaching him yeah. in that situation. Absolutely. Let's go! That'll send a chill down your spine right back into the action. Tied at three apiece. Foot exploring C. Just reminds me of the situation that EG got when they qualified for Tokyo against Cloud9. It was constantly chasing moments like that. Aces, over and over, and magic from the team. Ooh, Aaron trap play. Up. Yeah, with the rolling thunder, and they swing out behind it. But keep an eye, Mr. Fallen, ulted, and he got behind him. He's able to get one. Very well set up. Purge to hold that ult. Captain getting another one. Through the noise, Foot find themselves up in numbers, and they've invested the pit. What can Demon 1 and Ethan do? Ethan with two flashes here, no dog to clear the pit. And Demon 1 with an op. You've got some money, you've got some options. Here's the first, second shot rattling so, off. Yeah. Nothing found with that. But it does put Ethan in position to backstab when I think they might think they're both saving at this point. Money's low for foot here. Oh, he did spot one! He deals some damage, gets away. Love that for Ethan as well, flashing inside of the pit. That normally is cues for them to swing out of the pit. You saw it for a second, but he got blind. That's why he went and had to go back in. This is well considered from Ethan. And also you can tell, EG never giving up, right? Obviously they go for the save here, but they look for a little bit more damage. They look for mistakes being put out from foot. They didn't, I mean, get, they didn't get too many. No, but you're right. They do like to play on razor thin margin. Right? Min-max as much as they can. And yeah, that comes at risk, right? That comes at a cost. It's a gamble in a sense, but yeah. well handled. I mean, think back to the original plan in that round, though. That trap play on mound with the yeah. comms rolling thunder coming through. They just were so focused on their own idea that they forgot about the TP. Mm -hmm. And the killing blow was that paranoia for Mr. Fallen from that position. It was much, much better than any line you could have normally. Nearly parallel lines. Dissecting A for now. See Kiwi's wall go down. I thought for a second he was going to rely on that geometry of the door opening for him to get an angle on side of Root. He's going to do it with the dog coming through from Ethan as well. He's looking for that shot on the Root. Nothing found. But the idea there. I mean, you can tell how slow that is, though, to react yeah. to. Yeah. It's very, very simple, but if you're caught off guard, could have been an easy kill. Here. They're going to look for that split again. Remember that time? Use that KJ lockdown. Big tank coming out from Jogamo, tapping the door as well. It's only Maj who showed himself. Gonna clear the panel. It seems like they're going to split towards B. Jogamo having to give some of the space up. Takes a step back. Waits for help. And Kam is close by. Question is, when does Kiwi go? Because he's right up there. A clean shot out onto Kam. Babusio trading it back. Counter lockdown as well. Look at Demon 1 on the lurk with his hop. There it is, value found. Cracks though, keeping him back. Oh, he's blind. Cool. Ops for the classic, tries to get the kill, but no, Cracks cleans it up. Can he get half in this position while he's reloading? He does. The flash there pushes him off. 
Jogamo respecting the utility. Into the smoke. The tap and the clutch from Jogamo! It's happening again for EG. Tie it up instantly. They go down two, they say, absolutely not. This Odin comes out and it's been a thorn in foot side. And it's something that they've dealt with. They've had to fight against Fnatic. Who've gone over and over with this idea of this Odin being so, so good on this map. Not ready yet. Especially with the double controller on the other side too. You have two walls that you're spamming through. Either way, Op's still up for Demon 1. You saw him find one kill there. You've got Khan set up in a position where he can fault line. Oh, aggro. Yep, oh. off of that, and there it is. There was a flash, there was a fault line set up. So beautiful played from EG. And that's the first time they've actually gone for that aim aim control with the stun, but Demon 1 does fall, trying to get out of that panel. Can they scoop up the op? Jogmo oh, yeah. dealing some, di receiving some damage from this fam. That little pause there from Ethan with the trailblade. <laughs> They found a lot of space here. What can Busio do to hold them back? Nothing. That's another snapshot out from Cracks. And both the smokes are already down as well, so they can get on site right now. Atta Captain has scooped up the op. That was dropped by Demon One. And he's the one planning the spike now. Mr. Fallen trying to cut off the rotations. Ethan looking to find this space. And he has no. Oh, that was so close. What a turn. This retake's still tough, though. They've given up heaven. They go for a flash on it, though. Both the paranoia and the flash up from Ethan. They're aware of the situation. Trying to fill him behind it. Ethan looking for the first target. And the Molly's He's not going to kill any damage. He's, He's able to be above it, and they have no idea! Another clutch! Just on top of the box. They're still scratching their head about that one, because they're communicating right now, though. The Molly it hit, for sure. I was just looking at the smoke. There's no way I could miss that but just sits on top of the box, takes no damage from it. It's a clutch from Dogamo again, Last by the way. Player standing. Wow. Two wow. back to back. <laughs> yeah, we said the same thing, bro. Wow. I see. And we do see the lead switch. Actually, the first lead swap that we have all series long. Remember in the previous round, it was aggression towards A main, this time towards C. And it's quite the posse. I mean, you have Jogamo with the flash here, too. Demon 1 with the knives. This could be devastating, especially with the paranoia. Are they going to swing off the trailblazer? Yeah, they are. There it is. The oh, fall but Demon 1 gets caught on the wall. Still pushing forward, but that should give Foot a window to get out. But can Bustio hold them back himself? They've got him trapped. There's nowhere for them to go. Bustio playing such a dangerous position. And he gets two. Oh, oh, looking oh, for the oh, third, and Bustio finds it. Not able to convert on much more, but from the graves, he brings Mr. Fallen down with him. It's almost the same situation as the Ace 2. Just one short, though. But they control it, and they corral the spike into B main. Grax has very little to do. What a trap play. Again, nowhere for foot to go. And remember, the first initial play did not work. They get the paranoia yeah. off. They go for the dash. Demon 1 misses it. And foot just fall back, but they fall into Bustio push. That just goes to show, again, the layers to these traps, right? There's not just one to it. It's not just all riding or dying on Demon 1 finding the space. That's Lucio making a play in a second shot. Yeah, that's just dumb. <laughs> uh, the third one's dumb too, bro. Stunned. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> again, our reaction as well. He's him. No timeout called. Interesting here. Foot continuing to go forward. Kiwi has the ult. We saw this orb, and it was previously combined with an Anno. This time, just the orb. Just pushing him off the angle. Insta lockdown? Are you serious? That is early. I mean, especially with the info that Ethan's dog is getting right now. Gets it off before. The he gets suppressed. It was the knife, and then it was the ult. You're absolutely right, but they invest the overdrive. Bustio, tuck. And again, value for Bustio. Not able to get any more than that, though. Pushing the lockdown to break it. They're trying. Numbers still for foot here. They've taken the space, but it's going to be a two-man flank coming in through door. They should know. Two before now. Demon one and Ethan. Can they do it on their own? Can Ethan do it on his own? No, he cannot. A great response from foot.
the speed and the reaction there from both sides. I love that Busio falls back, the instantly pops the ult before the null command comes in, really expecting that. And then Foot to continue on and push forward into spawn instantly. Such a good response. I mean, you saw an opportunity there for Busio for sure. Yeah. To go for three and maybe go for the trigger discipline too, but chooses not to. Instead, maybe as well, thinking that Kiwi is going to be way ahead of his team. And he was. I don't blame him. It's a tantalizing temptation to see a neon dash across your screen like that. I get it. I totally get it. EG still hanging on to a lead. A narrow one at that. Oh, he's spotted. He's so done. Yeah. No way for him to get oh! out of that, but off of the paranoia. Jogamo looking to apply pressure. There's calm utility here, too, is both. No tit for tat. Numbers for Futa. Second flash there from Calm was good, but they really, really needed to find the kills with it. And I think understanding that, that's why both players are now down. No choice for discipline in that situation in the final round. Ethan has been playing really well around the Viper pit. He's in the lockdown. Looking to see if he once again can play on these razor thin margins. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Indecision. It's all good. Oh, all good. Oh, that was so close. All good. Trailblazer, one of the last bits of utility he has. Has the flash. Bustio's here too, who is having himself an outrageous half, by the way. This is much harder to deal with. They know where both sides are, and they're also cut off from finding any entrance. Whereas that last pit was much more on the platform. There's the flash for Bustio to go, though. He's just trampling his way forward, and he gets one. But that's all it is. Can Ethan clutch this out? The spam not going to land. Three for Atta Captain, and a six round for Foot. This game is very, very back and forth here on Lotus. And EG dealing with a formidable Lotus from their opponents right now. But with the reactions, very, very strong. This is such a good half, man. We have clutches. It's back and forth, a 6-6 six, six half. Yeah, multi-kills. Freaking <laughs> Busio's 21 and 10 at half. Golden Boy, what do you think about that? 21 and 10, is that good or, is it, or what? I mean, I think it's, it's right. pretty good. It's all right. Okay. <laughs> Busio's having himself a darn good time out there. And actually, he gave us an early Verizon high speed moment of the match. This is actually that ace that we had. And I was screaming for the ace the entire time, hoping that would come, but didn't think it was going to come courtesy of a nano swarm. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome, Kukuka. Everything was working in his favor. Also, he had Jogamo in case he needed to have that extra support. I think he's gotten several kills also with those uh, nano swarms and the reactions from him will just vibe and same goes with Potter. And it has been so insane from this guy and from Jojmo with his clutches as well. But the thing is, Ichi have needed those rounds. Yes. Thus far, totally. it's been two big multi-kill rounds from Busio, two clutches from Jojmo, where map one was defined by their preparation, their totally. consistency. This has been defined by the individual performances and really, Foot should be up more at this half. Yeah, and uh, I, I'm actually surprised, kind of like in, in, in the wrong way, because Foot has not reinvented the wheel uh, with what they have been doing on their attack. Sure. We know that they rely a lot on the performance that they're going to have, but even though EG has needed a little bit more of those clutches, they have gotten the rounds. That's what matters. So now looking forward, thinking about their uh, attack, I think that Foot is going to really have to come up with something different. But this is, I think, the stronger side for Foot on the defense with this composition. You can get a lot of value out of this Neon on these fast rotations, especially when you're playing against this solo controller comp, which is way more telegraphed in these late rounds. And not only that, we're talking about the clutches, we're talking about Boostio being unreal, and we see a demon that is actually a little bit more quiet. Yeah. We need him to shine when it comes to the attack. We need him uh, to be actually pivotal in the, in the tip of the spear. And really, the reason that you're sacrificing utility in this comp to bring out that double initiator is to be able to take okay. faster exterminate control to set up demon one for these early fights. So it is fair to say that the pressure is with him, especially because when Foot don't have an op in Kiwi's hands, they have a lot of round where, rounds where they're gambiting for space on the extremity. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and send it back over to the casters. Thank you so much, Golden Boy. Yes, a 6-6 six, six half. Now we see Evil Geniuses on the attacking side. We'll see if Demon can find a little bit more traction because he struggled in the first half. Just a 3-7 and seven for now. Boosie with the Sheriff. That guy is on fire for yes, sure. But it's important for Demon 1 to start getting going, not just for this game, but in general. I think, mean, given how close this game is, he might be the factor that needs to be. If he turns it up a little bit, that might give him the edge. 
yeah. we'll go back to that conversation in just a moment. The evil genius just looks to explore B. Oh, that Trailblazer just got so much value because they broke the door for it. Yeah. So it went so deep. Tough stun, actually. The knife, too. I mean, you're seeing so much of this utility dumped out onto the side, and there's another smoke. Demo and peeking in front of it, dealing a little bit of damage. Mr. Fallen's an issue here, though, because he's going to open that revolving door and cause pressure towards these players on the site. Cracks finding the first, getting spammed right back. Meanwhile, there's a fight at the door, and Mr. Fallen gets a kill out onto Com. How much more can they find to 2v2 here? Mosh so weak. And they're both sitting on the outside, trying to look in. Swing at the same time, Ethan getting the first. A weak Maj forced into 1v2, tries to swing out, swings into his death. Another pistol for EG. All four at this point in the series. And while it might feel like they've been relying on them to balloon the leads early, if that's the win con, they've been checking that box over and over every single half so far. And yeah, you can definitely see, we already just saw the Ares picked up actually on the second round here of this half. Yes, yes! I'm so good! I'm so good! <laughs> we often say this game is decided on confidence, and well, he's feeling it. I love this trap setup. The flash pops over the Viper Ball, and they can yep. swing through it. And the Neon is on the back side of this, too. It's not the angle you expect them to be in. And there it is. Yeah. They were ready for it, though. But the range, there's nobody really getting info about how close they are. They have to just do it off of the Viper wall. Duel coming down. There's a there's basically a timer because of that fuel if you're sitting in that pocket. Yeah. And you could tell EG was so far back it really didn't affect them whatsoever. And they were so patient. I do love the nuanced approach to the KO though. So, so good. Agreed. Flash, is he Molly off of that? No, the Trailblazer applying some pressure, though. They they smelled the stack here. Yeah, they did. And Busio's able to get a little bit of space mid, too, so they can just break the panel, go through that, not even bother with the fight. Calm committed to fighting this, though, and he's trapped against three. Trapped against three, but he's got a Bulldog at hand. It is just pistols on the other side, and, well, the pistol proved to be just what was needed. Switching things off, handing it over to Cracks. Just one weapon in their hands. Add a Captain Weak. Jogamo finding some spam, getting the kill out onto him. Marshall finding value, and once again, we find ourselves in a position where EG may be able to capitalize off of the pistol, and they do. And Bustio again. And despite the situation losing the gun, they're able to pick up what they need. So once again, a big chance at the bonus. Didn't happen in that first half, but on split, converted both of them. And you see so many instances where you have momentum for Evil Geniuses. When it's your IGL being able to pop off so hard like this, it gives so much energy to the rest of the team. Still expecting it from Demon 1. 25 and 10. And the thing is, he's consistently performing at a high level. This isn't like a one-off thing for Bustio. It's really been towards the tail end of the split and yeah. now coming into Tokyo as well. In playoffs, he was, I mean, just another beast. We, we knew he had that potential in him. Well, you, I mean, he's first. He's first in. Perfectly common, right? To have the Killjoy being the entry. And oh, almost finding the kill, but well done by beating him in one to trade back. They're stunning for the KJ pushing spawn. <laughs> Come on, man. And that's what it is. That confidence you're talking about, they've given themselves the sight, though, in a big opportunity right now, but they do lose that Vandal that Bustio had. Look at the flank, though, from Jogamo. He has an opportunity. He just has the Sheriff. Remember that KJ is dead, so the alarm bot not active. But out of captain, wise to it, a sixth sense. Knew the timing, knew the pressure. Demon one backing on up, throwing it in reverse and staying alive for now. With the spike planted, can they buy enough time? Can they get enough kills? The orb and the smoke as well, preventing them from being able to play this post plan effectively. It's just a fall line. He's gonna hold it. They're gonna hold it the entire way because of all the numbers that they have. Fuck get the defuse. Great play. And well handled too. Being able to take down at least the first force Demon 1 to have to go for that trade and lose the opportunity to have Boostio with his mollies in that post. And that's a play that, yeah, I mean, crazy. Crazy out of EG. But if it works, it works.
Let's see if Busier continues that same sort of reckless aggression. And it could hurt them in the long run, despite the scoreline from him. It definitely could. At the same time, though, when you're hot, you're hot. And off of that, Busio once again first, but much like we saw in the previous round, Demon One close by. Alarm bot cleared. Start to see a couple of bullets exchanged. Off of the face of the utility, but nothing done quite yet. Meanwhile, Kiwi is posted up very aggressively towards A with the judge. And it looks like they're gonna be pushing right back into him. The spike is there. is gonna be the first. Demon One close by. Do they have any idea? Are they meticulous enough to check this? No, they're not. Right there. Off of that, the question is, how much more value can they find? Calm tucking tail and rotating away. And you've got a luxury of space. You've got space B, you've got space C. Calm has options here. So many options. A plethora of positions to go into. Bustio falls. Power on the side of these players. Good flashes and spots them both, so they have so much time to actually pivot into a deeper position. No wall available, no Ooh. smoke either, so they can get off site here. That was bold, though. Ethan Run almost paying for if it. They buy time for the stun to come back up. It just did. Now they can swing off of something. What other utility do they have? Nothing for Ethan. Just the Phantom. Aftershock available, too. Cheeky flash. But Ethan falls. That's a 4K for Kiwi. Potential at an ace, but calm in the clutch. So good in Americas! So good in Japan! Three clutch rounds now from Evil Geniuses, and that's carrying them through to this lead on their opponent's map pick. And possibly a 2-0 in their first match here at Tokyo. That would be a complete reversal from what we saw at lock for this team, and obviously this team has been upgraded so much. The focus that they had on improving over and over, the fact that they're here is crazy. Remember, it was a knife on this map that punched their ticket here, and they're seizing the moment. Plenty of opportunities to do it again, though. He's talking about dealing a lot of pressure. That high is way too much to deal with. Remember this team, we saw many instances of foot getting advantages on these light buy rounds, but not quite able to close them out on split. That was over and over happening. I mean, they were put in that situation so often. Can they convert here? Kiwi has ult and has a vandal in hand. Comms ult too, that's what they're waiting for right now. Could give them the sight. Busios as well. Now they have plenty of tools to play in the post, but these Molly's not broken yet. Oh, and they kind of have to commit here because there's no space B and there's no space A. They're just going to walk right into the setup the foot half. Kiwi's caught. And you have this play on the back. Yes, certainly two players detained right now. They're not able to punish. And Demon one goes for it, but the door open and the flank for Mound too. And the time has expired. The window's closed. Ethan falling. Remember, it was this lighter weaponry, and they've swapped the, the guns now. It's Cracks who has the rifle. Here. 25 seconds. And look at how disciplined Foot are. Holding in Mound. Holding in B. Forcing EG to go into them. And that's exactly what they do. Demon 1 with 18 HP and 14 seconds left. Forced into a surely unwinnable situation. Oh, you can plant here, actually. Out of Captain's giving up so much space, he's not going to go forward instead. He went so far up. <laughs> and the clock has expired. Thrifty. Question is, who dies? It's Demon 1 who falls, but a thrifty round for Foot. They finally get it. Hunting for it so often. They finally get it. Can they hang on with that success? The opening and again, getting up on top of that root, being able to high low peak, like you called out. So difficult for Giacomo to deal with in that situation. And now EG is the one who's forced down to the, just the pistols. No stingers, nothing invested. Get out of my way. Wow. That would be a terrible place to be standing. <laughs> <laughs> Three pieces of util, the stun from Kiwi, the nade as well from Cracks, and a molly too to get a one tap on potentially a Jogamo TP, something like that. And despite that, EG not only get pivot back to this orb on B, but also get the space that they were looking for at the beginning. 
and Foot was looking to counter. And opening the door too, normally this is followed up with a dog. This time Bustio's up before any other util. They're gonna split into this, but there's so much Killjoy utility here. They've cleared some of it. They're not gonna expect Second Bustio. Use off of the oh. flash, but the shot not able to land. What a turn from Cracks. Very well done by the KO. Now off of that paranoia, falling, trying to find a window, and he cannot. But Cracks continues to be a problem. Now in the face of the Trailblazer, can he find more? Yes, he can. That's three. Ethan swinging around, finally dealing with him. It was all an exercise in futility. We're tied at nine. It is completely unclear which way the second map will go. Despite the fact that we were late into it. Round 19. But we will get those guns back up from Evil Geniuses right now. And we will get a timeout as well. We see on the side a foot, a full house of those ults. And the defensive Kiwi Neon Op. We've seen it over and over. We saw it at locking against an NA team. Caused so much trouble. Let's see if EG can handle it. It's also just very quickly to, to go back to the fact that we're sitting in a time right and it's timeout right now. The fact that we've played 18 rounds and we're tied at nine apiece and this is the first timeout that we get. Yeah. All map is just crazy. <laughs> first for both teams too. Yeah, we're being told they're going to be calling. Both teams are going to be calling a timeout, so we have a bit of an extended opportunity to have a chat. Yeah. On what's gone on here, and I think. Yeah, so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about Foot because, yes, they've been able to be competitive in this, and you just highlighted Kiwi won with the op. He's so good in that situation. But I think the conversation around Foot historically has been, all right, you know what you're getting with Kiwi, right? Who else can deliver that for their team? Who else can step up when their star duelist is perhaps not dropping 40 or, or struggling a little bit? I think on that path here in the playoffs in AMEA, it was definitely out of captain. I would have to agree, up. yeah. And we saw moments like that on split. Yep. He is tied up at the top of the leaderboard with his teammate right now, Kiwi. I also look at Cracks. That guy has explosive moments, especially on those Ecos. It wasn't the forefront there in that last one that they won, but he's such a beast in some instances. I think specifically, though, they have so many. I mean, we've already seen some of the trap plays that they're running with the KO flashes. So if they can continue to get success with those, I think is the key part of how Foot can actually take this to a win, take this over the edge. Which is just crazy to think about that that's even the question. Because remember, this is their map pick. Historically, they've been very good at it. They've played it nine times. Yeah. Just from the beginning of EMEA up until now, this is their 10th rep on this map. Yeah. They're comfortable here. And for EG to be pushing them the way that they have has just been very impressive. But you're right, now they're going to have to face, as we expire the second time out, they're facing the five ults on the defensive side. <laughs> so many options, so many tools for foot. I do also want to give credit to EG to make this map, like you said, uh, a deal. Because foot, again, experience, you said 10 maps. The losses that they have against Fnatic and Team Liquid, I mean, those are the first yeah. and second seed of EMEA. Yep. The fact that EG is putting up performances to match those, maybe not Fnatic, who got 13-1 yeah. against Foot <laughs> on this map. But still, the fact that that's a possible scenario that we're seeing. Both teams with a brief moment to talk things over and approach things with a fresh look. I mean, and shoot, that was a whole halftime break with the double timeout. <laughs> that really was. Yeah, plenty of time to discuss. Question is always on the other side of this, what's, what's different? Right, what's the new approach? It's so nice here. This time it's solo lurking. They're taking mound control. They're putting a deep alarm bot. And Giacomo is not only breaking the panel, but also opening up the door. Full pressure on the safe side with one person. A little bit of misdirection. Doubt instilled into the minds of the defenses. And the problem here, too, is Kiwi's under pressure from both sides. Now the panel and everywhere else. They're committing to this. Bustios exploring by himself at sea while the rest of the hit is A. Off of the face of the rolling thunder. And a captain holds the line. Cracks doing a bit of the same. And this has gone horribly asunder. And that was a breach ult to push them in. They did already bait out one molly from out of captain, but the second one as well. Really allowing these guys to just stay put and hold the line out of captain with stun kills as well. 30 seconds left. Oh, if he gets the off out, okay. Uh, an attempt was made, but yeah. A prime gaming flawless round for Foot. And you mentioned it. It was off the rolling thunder. Yeah. Right? But the stun kills out from Adam Captain. I think he got three that round, and Cracks got another. It was by committee, and it was impressive nonetheless. Yeah, that dual anchor hold. 
Speaking of prime gaming flawless, yeah, that first kill on the Demon 1, again, for Evil Geniuses, oof, Demon 1 needs to step up here in the final moments of this map if he wants to close out this series in a flawless fashion like a 2-0. The bottom of the leaderboard. Haven't seen him in that position very much at all. After taking America's by storm, he leaves the comfort of his home and now finds himself struggling. I mean, talk about a whirlwind for a player to go through, though, to no get kidding. his passport, visa, everything expedited. You're hearing him travel across the U.S. as this hit comes through Kiwi. Gets success with the op on the other side of the map. And at the best attempt from EG, that's all it is for now. One for one. Stingers in the hands of Ethan and Com and a rifle from Busia. Yeah, but even if this does end up giving a, a site, giving a plant, you have so many tools here from foot. The lockdown, specifically here in Waterfall. Right on cue. Giacomo's going to go really aggressive here. He has a one way that he can maybe peek past and challenge Kiwi against. Oh, wait, whoa. Whoa. Oh, whoa. that's huge! That's an op that can come through Waterfall as well. They're going to try to challenge him in the spawn, but he's already gone. Tables have turned so tremendously. And now Crack's pushing forward weak into the face of two, but the kills have gone back and forth. Ethan with six HP and just the Stinger cannot deliver, but Maj can. What a round. If he stays one more second back towards mound, it's a different story. This defuse wouldn't be able to get connected with. Oh. But it's crazy because his role there with the Stinger is to do a drive-by. Yeah. Get back into that second corner that he ends up falling into. While the rest of his team stays up and maybe finds the kills. A big threat. But don't forget that last anti that last round was flawless for them. So despite losing a bunch on this anti-eco, but are still very much in control of the bank. They're so loud, bro, and I don't think it's because of volume. <laughs> I think it plays it popping. Another timeout called three in the last, what, two rounds? That we've seen, if I'm not mistaken, this time courtesy of Evil Geniuses. They find themselves down two rounds, and it's been four rounds in a row for the defensive side. What a flip. Well, the funny thing is, too, is we think about foot on this map, a lot of their wins have come off of outrageous attack side halves. Yep. Ten twos, multiple ten twos. Yep. And for them to bring it back on the defensive side is just so impressive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's been a close game the entire time, right? I think right now, if I'm in the timeout for EG, thinking a lot about how to get Demon 1 a little bit more active, right? The last one might have been a lot of strategy talk, given that two minutes that we had. Yep. This time, though, if I'm the vets on this team, and there's not many of them for right. Evil Geniuses, I'm looking at Ethan to try to really get his team, continue to give Bustio confidence, and also really focus on getting Demon 1 active. This series has definitely been rough for him so far on the global stage, his first time stepping on. But it's not just him too, it's Bustio, it's Jogamo, it's Calm, it's Demon 1. None of them have made an international event, a global event, so far in their careers. See the line set up off the fault line. They swing through. And it's just going to be a trade of utility. First the paranoia, then the flash. And nobody can see a damn thing. Kills go traded one for one. Presence still persists here. As you see Ethan grabbing the orb in the smoke is Mr. Fallen looking for a free one. Nothing delivered. Slight arc on that. But Kiwi does take the space to catch the pivot back. Off of the Seekers from so far back. And the Trailblazer, too. Yeah. I mean, they got what they were looking for. They pushed him off the angle. But look now at the space for Giacomo. He's actually pushing the site with that Seeker. The alarm bot gives him away. How much further does Giacomo go? He's so fast, Kiwi. He's scaling up. The op just on the other side. Dealt and the kill with. delivered. Mosh dicing with death now. He's going to get one. Giacomo TTs across. Are you kidding me? Looking to put it on match point. The thing is, Demon One found so much space by himself. You see him on the minimap now. Potentially scaling up into spawn. The problem with this is it's, it's just going to take so long. I mean, yeah, but we've seen so many instances of the EG players being able to really pick at multiple sides of the map. So with this plant as well, you have no clue about the rest. If Demon One can find some way 
to get value out of his deep position and still stay alive to rejoin Ethan late. Ten seconds left. Remember, he has struggled this map. He struggled this series. I'm looking at Mr. Fallen to, yes, TP mound instantly. Demon one, the linchpin, first to fall is Cracks. Attention divided as the approach from foot is from multiple sides. They've joined themselves kind of here with a crossfire and spawn. Now Ethan one giving the space. Maj's timing is going to be tremendous. If he can hit the window just right. Spike has ticked further away. Demon one down to 29 HP, eventually falls. Ethan left in the clutch. Can he do it? No, he cannot. And the plant was good for him too. The idea there from EG definitely could have worked in the 2v3. But foot. And as well for them, I mean, for them. They're the first Turkish team in two years to make it here. Last one. It was way back at Masters Berlin. The desk talked on it a lot. But for them, they have not attended a global event either. It's the same exact situation, but without a single veteran. These guys qualified through tier two last year. They won that circuit for EMEA. One of the very few teams in partnerships to actually make a team from tier two and keep it into the tier one system. You can see the setup towards C, but the attention is B, off of the op. No pressure, patient, wow. Yeah, it was the fault line, but there's no known. swing off of that. Now EG investing the lockdown. To see what space they can find. What Mr. Fallen gone hunting? The paranoia is great. TP in from Jargamo. He breaks the angle. QB did get detained up top though. Are they gonna make a push for it? I mean, surely. Jargamo still has the flash. Again, the window has closed. Now they explore. The flash not landing, but the shot isn't either. Splitting the uprights as Cracks does clean up Demon 1. Meanwhile, look at the pit. Look at the pressure through the door. The pit has covered the spike. It's going to be too much. Surely it's too much for them to handle. What can Bustio do? Another kill acquired. I mean, they're looking for spam here. Calm has a fault line, too, to make it difficult. And there's a flash. There oh. it is. The swing. Bustio's got aggressive. Bustio's got aggressive, and he gets four. Not able to land the ace, but time is short. Cracks with three. Time ticking away. And there's no way that we just saw that that hold from EG. That play from Bustio. <laughs> what a lunatic. He's crazy. And it's not a pop off anymore. It's instant focus for Bustio. Look at this aggression. Remaining. And we mentioned earlier in the game, early in this half, Bustio was going crazy, way overconfident. Now he's hit 30 in round 23. Now he's one of the only sparks on this team. And to win and turn a situation like that, it's crazy. Foot still on match point. Plenty of time, plenty of bank. But EG managing to break the streak. That was five rounds in a row that the defense had been able to put up. And they're doing a great job neutralizing Kiwi. He's constantly switching up on the space that he's taking too. Forcing him to retake with the op, and you can see how uncomfortable it was in that last round, missing that shot. And still able to push them back out of be heaven, but if he takes one there, you see that situation a lot different. There's a lot of defensive presence here. Oh my goodness. On the other side of the wall. What's the cue? Do they just contact out? It's the flash, it's the spam, and it's a 3K for EG! The side is theirs! EG not done with this map yet. And unless Foot can pull off a 2v5. I think it's an instant save here, Doug. Yeah, I agree. You've got the op in the hands of Kiwi. He's already tagged down. You've got a Vandal for Maj. One off of the KJ ult, too. But the rest of the players who are in the grave right now, 500 credits, 350 credits, 150 credits. They're broke. They're big broke. If they don't save these weapons, you're looking at a possible easy overtime round yeah. for EG. At least a much, much easier one. Despite the fact that by situation. Broke. To close out the map in a situation like that would be ridiculous. But both guns will get carried over. Uh, Jacmo, careful there. It's the Phantom instead. We got to see what the buy situation is going to look like, because you're right. Foot have historically been very good in these situations, these light buy, eco situations, if you will. They've only converted. Not like they've had an abundance of them.
But I also think that these situations where you have hero rifles, you have hero ops, are actually much, much more difficult to play with if you're those light five players. Because the situation is going to be, let's play this round normal. But you have two Spectres out. Can you really even afford to do that? Busio with his KJ lockdown too, have to be considered. And we'll have that final timeout from foot in regulation. It was so long until we got even a single one from both teams. Now we've seen all four. A pause for dramatic effect. Build the tension <laughs> as we potentially find ourselves just a few moments away from a 2-0, or excuse me, from overtime or pushing ourselves into the third map. Yeah. Oh, what a way to kick off Masters yeah. Tokyo here. No kidding. The audience, the fans, we all get a taste of what it's going to be like for these next couple of weeks. Oh, and then even just the international clash too, man. We don't get very many opportunities to see match matchups like this. <laughs> I love guys literally drawing on the monitor. <laughs> but I Epic mean, pen doesn't work when it's just a real pen, right? <laughs> My goodness. What a start. And Foot right now, I mean, it, again, to bring it back to that conversation that we're constantly going to have about this team and Navi as well in the group stage, it's super important that they get a first win, that they get themselves up already yeah. in terms of the battle between those two teams because they're fighting for a champion spot with all the NBA teams. It's much, much more pressure on them than for EG, who obviously they want to get out of groups, but they at least already have another global event booked. Kiwi has already taken almost all of A-Main with an op, and there's help close by. But EG choosing not to explore that way. The lockdown invested with the same place as we saw last time. Yep. Counter lockdown used, but that does still give up a plant. It's so far back. If he could have got that down in V-Link, that would have been different. And you see the ping on the minimap. That's where they want to go. They're going to commit to this beach. Digging their heels oh. in the sand as Jogmo goes aggressive on the ult. He's so far away. That's crazy. Nobody's heard that from that distance. And now Paranoia instilled as they wonder where has he gone. Oh, Damon one, Flash gets two. Full blind. Dashing back, getting up high. The knives don't land. Nobody there to help, but they're fine sitting behind this field. And Ethan gets it anyways. And now Jogmo appears. The early ult repositioned. Couple of bullets into the back of the hopes and dreams of foot on that round. We're going OT, baby. We're going the distance. Switching sides. It's oh definitely a huge welcome to Tokyo. For everybody. That's ridiculous from Demon One. Full blind, two headshots One with the spray from the Vandal. And then instantly popping knives. <laughs> to be that disoriented in that moment, but still have the wherewithal to know you're two off of the ult. Yep. Very well done. Woo, baby. And Bustio, right? By the way, we're heading into overtime right now. We have a chance to see Bustio really push up on the scoreboard. Already dropped 30 in regulation. At this point, we're looking at definitely a game here. EG versus Foot, map two. First overtime. And we swap sides now. Foot back to the at that attack. Remember, such good halves in EMEA. But the one here was only 6-6. Six, six. Far cry from their usual performance. The Demon One feeling it. Dashing away, staying alive. We've got mount control here. Foot have the ideas. There's no flashes anymore from Crack, so they can't actually take it, but they do anyways. He's so pacey, he's so aggressive, and you're right, Crax was close by. And off of that, Jogamo punished. It's like Jogamo's trying to do what Mr. Fallen was by hiding in that smoke for so long. Yeah. Ulturb goes over to Mon. He's repositioned. The spike's still not hand, but look at how far up Ethan is. Boost no is real pushing. way to apply pressure. It's so crazy. It's such a nasty off angle. You're playing in a spot that, oh my goodness. The spike is rotating back, and Ethan's wise to it. He knows. He hears it. Not it. Oh, he does land the shots with one, one bullet. bullet left. How does he get the second? He cannot. No time to switch, even. Meanwhile, Mr. Fallen has gotten so far up into B already. Yeah, I mean, they're going to get the package delivered. But can they secure it? Can they preserve it? Look at Demon One on the flank, instantly taking the space that he knows they have to give up. They don't know Mr. Fallen's position, but Demon One, with this information, he probably does. Ult used. Demon One creeping forward. 
Neither target found. But a position for heroics once again. An opportunity to right the ship. Mr. Fallen in the smoke, a 1v3. Nothing found. And evil geniuses, they fought back hard to make it to overtime. They take advantage in the first one. Match point. The very first one. Yeah, again, that angle was just so brutal. Because you can fall back into a position that mound can't even help you. So the players who are funneling in, not only do you get a kill on the mound players as they're using you to. Oh my god. The duality of man right there. <laughs> Hotter chuckling popping off as guys is just a blank stare into the screen. Stun. EG in a position to close things out 2-0. Through some heroics, as now you see Foot pushing forward A. They've once again put Kiwi One in such an aggressive position, but you see Com on. You can see it through the X-ray. He's set up with the fault line, ready to go. Yeah, and remember, early on in this match, we saw so much Odin play. That's completely gone from Evil Geniuses. That could have punished Kiwi right there. The deep flash, EG take A. Will he stay main for now? You're still gonna have to get through the alarm about the smoke and the nanos. The slow pace out of the side of EG might indicate that they're going for like an orb farm, which is really good on this map in overtime because you can yeah. get Ulta. How much do they bite on this? The alarm has been cleared, the door has been opened. And now the Nano's used. This is buying some time for Foot to rotate over. Crax is here. Kiwi's still holding line. But they're gonna commit. The paranoia pushing him off the angle. Flash on oh, the other stuck, side, and now stuck. the aftershock. There's nowhere to go. You gotta swing out into your death. This might be it here. Numbers, EG. And the spike ticks, cracks, swinging out of the smoke, swinging into calm, and it's all on to Ada Captain, and he cannot deliver. EG Open Masters Tokyo with a 2-0 win over Foot. It's quick, it's swift. And the miracle run continues. They're gonna go up into that upper bracket instantly to put, put them in a position to quick exit out of the group in the playoffs. And the only America's representative to have that instant berth in the playoffs is Loud, EG. Putting themselves instantly in great position to capitalize. I've, I've got to go back to what we talked about earlier in the series. They weren't even supposed to be nope. here, dog. <laughs> if not for a knife from a coach, a coach, they wouldn't be here. Yeah. And now they find themselves standing on the international stage with a W. And it was very tough opponents. Yeah. I think on the side of foot, you really, I mean, especially before Demon 1 came to, came to Tokyo, before we knew that that was a possibility. We think it's good. I mean, they might be the favorites in that series. Absolutely. But it's not even Demon 1 who ends up being the key factor in that. It's the entire team effort, but specifically Bustio and his calling. That is the factor against Foot here. His calling, his frags, 35 and 19. <laughs> with five first bloods, mind you. Yeah, as the KJ. I mean, Ty is the first bloods of Demon 1. He was entering, <laughs> right? He was anchoring. A jack of all trades such a good story for this team and again the inexperience not showing so far no maybe a little bit in situations here and there but that's a fantastic start it is and to remember foot put together a ferocious comeback yeah it won what six rounds in a row five rounds in a row something like that On inexperienced teams they crumble there yeah. right they fold and eg stay strong I think specifically because it's the map pick of their opponents, right? But the sparks that they had, Bustio, Giacomo with a couple clutches as well. It definitely reminds me of that qualifying match against Cloud9 that they had in that upper bracket. Where it felt like some of the players could do no wrong. And you saw. At so many moments, how much fun these guys were having. Potter laughing in overtime. <laughs> I mean, they're likable. You can, you got to give them that. I mean, yeah. When you're when you're having fun like that. I mean, they did have plenty of reasons to laugh too. They had plenty of reasons to giggle. But what a performance! It's so nice because 
during that initial split where they started off very slow, where they got 13 0 against Loud, they turned into the laughing stock yeah. of Americas. But instead, now they're the ones laughing as they're here in Tokyo. And it wasn't without it wasn't without heroic foot as well, man. Oh, man. We saw cracks. He played exceptionally well. Adam Captain. Captain did was as well. The questions around who steps up when Kiwi isn't struggling or struggling, or maybe not even struggling, but not dropping 30. He's getting neutralized by the yeah. approaches from EG. It was so solid. Those trailblazers from Ethan over and over, making him no, not a factor. So difficult to deal with. You can see the tension on Potter's face. A 2-0 win for EG. We're going to throw it down to the desk to break it down. That's going to be great. He said desk. He did. This is Sadie. She's on Verizon, and she has the new My Plan, where she gets exactly what she wants and only pays for what she needs. She picks only the perks she wants and saves on every one, all with an incredible new iPhone. Get iPhone 14 Pro on us when you switch. It's your Verizon. Hello! Just picking up the garbage that I dropped so that Yinsu doesn't yell at me when we change over hosts. In any she'll case, yell at so you no matter what. she'll still yell at me yeah. because I'm going to leave the seat too high, and it, it's a whole thing, everyone. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the game that we just watched because EG with a 2 0 victory manages to not only do it in dominating fashion, but Looked like they were having a pretty good time up there. And I think if uh, a team like Evil Geniuses Kakuka is having a yep. good time, eh, whew, watch out for everyone else. Yeah, exactly. Uh, on the other side, maybe a foot they thought they'd close it up. But as you said, EG bringing it back also. They managed to get four out of four pistols in the match that we saw today. A very dominant performance at the beginning of uh, those first halves. And it really seemed like it was a matter of time before EG picked up more of these rounds. Foot's defense left so many of these holes where EG was consistently able to find these lurks into deep positions, but it was the late round coordination from foot, their individuals performing in those moments that kept them in it. But EG turned that around in the last few rounds and showed excellent mental resiliency. This is a team that went from being kind of the laughing stock of America's in the first few weeks that everyone That's was doubting. Mean. No, it's because everyone is mean. That's because the community the internet is quite mean. Be nice now. And I mean, this is the time to be nice to EG because they really have turned it around. They look incredible on this game. And like you're saying, they were chilling, they were laughing, having fun, looking comfortable on that stage. Yeah, yeah. That's a scary thing, right, to have to deal with. It's when you have a team that can just go out there and just feel comfortable, despite the conditions that they find themselves in. But I have no doubt that Foot, after this, will find that footing. Oh, God, I can't believe I said that. But they will find just that. imagine that how the rest of the year has been. I know, I know, <laughs> especially because I just use the same generic phrases over and over again. But that being said, like, yeah. uh, but no, they, they really ha are a team that's going to need to, like, really break it down. What do you see, I guess, for foot that they'll need to try and, like, improve upon as they get ready for this lower bracket run? Oh, they're not going to crumble down. I think that that they're not the team that usually does that. They've been uh, on this side uh, of the coin many, many times. I think that they're just going to come back stronger. Of course, it's very tough because now one more loss and you're gone and you have to go home. And not only that, probably 
that means you also have to go through LCQ if Navi has, you know, a better placement than you. So, of course, the pressure is there, but I think they are used to that kind of situation. It is a very high-pressure situation for them, but for EG, they continue to play with house money. They've continued to defy expectations, to make it here, to keep going, and they just look freed by that weight off their shoulders. Yeah. And in this, they also showed their variety of play styles. They can come in with really good prep, counter striding on map number one, punish their opponent's tendencies, and they can also, in a more chaotic map that they're less comfortable on, that they're not willing to play as often, still yeah. perform. And I think that's actually a really good point that you make, Mimi, because that was a, a real sticking point for this team earlier on in the season was they don't, they, they don't feel flexible. They don't feel like they can mold themselves to their opponents. And this was an EG that did literally just that. So really, the sky's the limit for this team, Kukuka. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, having to play on the first day is something that not many teams like. It's yeah. kind of like the pressure's all on you. Uh, many and people first get, match. Exactly. You're the first Ooh. match. Everybody gets a little bit more time. You just got here and you have to do all the media and all of that. And then you have to play. Everybody's looking at you. Everybody's going to be like, okay, let's see if they change something. This are the first ones, how everything is going to be here. So, of course, it's something that not many teams like, but with this performance and how comfortable they were, it's going to tell a lot about how the rest of the matches are going to go for them. And I think so much of that has to be credited to the, the leaders of this team, in particular, Busio, having a fantastic yes. individual performance. It looked like he had plot armor that on time. the Killjoy throughout this yeah. one. And he was still calling a really solid game throughout that. And I think it's in part because of the people around him. It's yeah. Ethan being an emotional leader, bringing the experience onto the situation here at LAN. And Potter as well, doing the same, helping them to come up with the ideas ahead of time. It's just such a different EG than we yeah. saw at the beginning of the year. It's very clear, like, in talking to the players and, and getting to know them more as the split progressed, that this is a team that at this point now, they've realized, like, we're, we're in this together. We're, we're in the ride. We just got to find a way. We just got to make this work. And and they are making it work. But not only are they making it work, but they're looking great throughout the process now. Of course, we'll see what FUT does as they get ready for their lower bracket run. Anything truly is possible here uh, for FUT. And, and I don't want to count them out just yet. I do feel like we saw some great ideas, and I think that perhaps them being here and them kind of getting rattled, you know, a little bit sure. is kind of going to, you know, knock some sense into them and get them ready for this next few games. I, I think it has to for FUT, especially since you do lose on really your favorite map that has been consistently a home ground for them. Yeah. For foot, it's going to be a tough bit of time to turn around for this lower bracket, but I really think it does have to come down to changing over some of their tendencies. We saw EG yes. punishing that with players in these forward positions that they were playing back in EMEA on split on this map as well, always throwing the same utility combos, always having the same kind of early round tendencies that is just very readable. So mixing things up, get, getting a little bit more loose like EG was showing could be huge for foot. Yeah. yeah, but I think that's, that is something that they could learn over time. Maybe do they, they do not have that time. Because as I was saying during the halftime, I don't think that Foot was reinventing the wheel and what no. they, they were doing on Lotus. They were being very uh, repetitive of what we had seen on EMEA. So I just hope that they don't they don't just keep thinking of what could have happened if they had, had it gone to Pearl. I totally agree on that one. Of course, we'll see Foot later on in the tournament. But the day belongs to evil geniuses. So let's go ahead and send it down to Yinsu standing by for the rise and postman interview she's got Boostio. Thank you very much Golden Boy. I am joined by Boostio here. Uh, congratulations on your first win. 35 kills. Yeah? You're yeah. not you're, mess yeah. you're not messing around? No. Nope. Yeah, and the first days of Masters feels pretty good. Yeah, uh, I also I feel like the last time uh, you played EMEA a team was back in Lockin, Heretics, you beat them. Mm -hmm. You beat them today. You're a bit of a EMEA slayer right now. How was how was that game? Uh, yeah, Foot's a really good team. So um, that one is a lot harder than Heretics. Heretics was pretty easy. That was a very hard match, um, and we just got it done. Speaking of a hard match, um, at least in the MEA, uh, teams usually avoid Lotus when they play against Foot because it is their best map. I think uh, maybe you guys kind of felt that as well as you were playing against them. Why did you float that today? Um, I think it was just because we just wanted to ban Bind instead of Lotus, pretty much. Why did you want to ban Bind instead of Lotus? No comment. Uh, is this a FUT specific strat? Mm, uh, that you it's for us to... mainly. Oh, okay. So yeah. we'll see what happens in the next yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, for a while, we didn't think that you were going to get Demon 1 on this stage. I mm -hmm. think everybody was a little bit sad about it. Um, how big of a buff is it to have him with you guys? And how long have you had even uh, to prepare with him? Yeah, so we figured out about three days ago that he was coming, or four days ago, so very little time. So we've only had three days of practice pretty much since we've been in Tokyo. 
And um, it means everything for him to come because he got us here in the first place throughout the season. He was with us the whole time. So him being here is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, despite not having that much practice, I don't think we could tell that mm -hmm. you guys haven't been playing with him uh, that much. But how much has that changed your game plan? Because obviously you, you guys were already ready to sub someone else in and not play with him. Yeah, I think um, it did change a lot like the last week or two. Uh, we had a substitute, of course, but this last week or three days, we just kind of just said, just focus on communication, just our defaults, just all our old strats. Don't really try to add anything new since we don't have that much time anyways. So it's just going to the basics pretty much and it ended up working out perfectly. I think in uh, in your region in the Americas, uh, mm -hmm. the Potter timeout, the Potter pauses mm -hmm. is a thing that we uh, tend to discuss about. There's a, it's very, very impactful. I think we definitely saw that today mm -hmm. on Lotus. Uh, could you describe to me what kind of input Potter does have in those timeouts? Yeah, she'll usually in the timeout, um, uh, for example, will just tell us what she thinks is the best play to do in that moment with our ultimates and uh, what the enemy team's been doing, and then we'll just do that. And then she'll just give us um, just the standard, just make sure to trade well, communicate. But uh, yeah. How much do you think that timeout helped uh, in uh, overtime? Um, in overtime? Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, before overtime, before yeah, you went uh, The 9 12 pause yeah. was very good for us. Um, we definitely needed it. It was kind of like we were losing it. We just settled down after that timeout and we got the job done. Thank you very much, uh, Boost You. We'll see you uh, on the next round of this group stage. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, you. We are going to be showing you guys DRX versus ASC in just a moment. But first, enjoy the Prime Gaming post match highlights. Competition around the world. We can finally say it's time. The top teams are ready to face off on the global stage. America's EMEA, Pacific, and China. Everyone is here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to day one of Masters Tokyo. Coming at you live from the Tipstar Dome in Chiba. Two unlikely contenders find themselves in a collision course here in Tokyo. It's about to go down. Evil Geniuses versus Fun Esports. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. He is, and he's gonna continue to go forward, but EG keeping him back. Blocking sight. We settle into a 2v2, the spam from Demon 1. Nice! Demon 1 tugging in his hook. He goes back up high, and every single blade misses. Eyes on calm to hold the spam. He had to respond with it, not able to get the kill. To keep the map alive in a situation like this, impossible. A prime gaming flawless to close map one for Evil Geniuses. Oh, but Busio wow. may hold the line by himself. There's the spam that we were just referring to. In the face of the lockdown, Busio swings out and gets four. Majin, an impossible situation, and the very first ace in Japan goes to Busio. Tension and ace, but Tom in the clutch. So good in America! So good in Japan! Pick the pig! The pig! There it is, the swing. Busio's got aggressive! Busio's got aggressive! Open Masters Tokyo with a 2-0 win over foot. It's quick, it's swift, and the miracle run continues.